This week on CrossFeed. The FBI investigates Islam. France outlaws public prayer. Pat Robertson amends God's divorce rules. Is life constitutional? And are safety triangles too worldly? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. Hello, everybody. Welcome on this September the 18th. Hope everybody's uh, enjoying. I'm I, I'm curious. Here's a, a, a um, a question for all of you and, and uh, anybody that, that gets this within, uh, you know, any time in sort of September of 2011. Um, I, I'd like to know if, if you attended church uh, services d- during this week of, of September 18th, what was attendance like? Because usually things are, sort of pick up um, after the summer slump in September. And, um, and ours was really down. And and I think that here the the weather was really nice and it was sort of the first really nice weekend and I think that people were just sort of gone enjoying the weather out camping or whatever and um, but I, I'm just kind of I'm I'm kind of trying to figure this out and I'm curious other people did you notice things sort of pick back up the way they used to um, or did it uh, did did you notice things were down by you too so see hey, that. Okay. Well, it's hard to say for us because our first service attendance was really down, but that was because we had a voters meeting after the second service. So all those people came to second service, so they stay for the voters meeting. Yeah, so I don't know if it was up or down. I'll find out from the numbers tomorrow. We'll take a look at it and figure it out. But you know what? They weren't they weren't praying out in the streets, so that's the important thing. Mm, okay. So this is a this is kind of strange. In France, they have outlawed. Now, and it's important that um, that we note what this is, praying in the streets, okay? Literally, in the street. Right. And um, so this, you're supposed to keep public spaces secular, but um, I'm in, and I don't totally understand, I, I think something's lost in the translation here, um, so to speak, that um, literally... Uh, praying in the streets of Paris is against the law, uh, starting this past Friday, after the interior minister warned the police will use force if Muslims and those of any other faith, <laughs> which is kind of interesting wording, uh, disobey the new rule to keep the French capital's public spaces secular. Well, yeah, well, apparently the problem is that a lot of these um, uh, French mosques uh, are over full, and so they have all these Muslims spilling out into the streets. Uh, one street, they had a, a, a what they say, uh, close to a thousand Muslims clogging the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they couldn't, uh, you know, really, I mean, what do you do then, you know? Um, I mean, you, can, you, you how do you drive around? Uh, I mean, this is not praying on the sidewalk. I mean, this is people out in the street. They, you know... They block the street. Guy, I like one guy. Forget the secular space stuff. How about this? Street, the street is for driving in, not praying on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that just comes to that, you know, simple thing, you know. I mean, you've never, I don't think you've ever had the fun of being in Europe. These people know how to drive anyway. <laughs> I mean, these the Muslims are just going to get run over. These people don't stop. I remember when I was in uh, Italy. Uh, we were told very, very frankly by uh, a, uh, a cop over there. He said, you Americans are used to the idea that pedestrians have the right of way. That is not true here. The Italian rule is very simple. The car is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I mean, end of story. So, um, now, I, I totally understand this whole concept of, 
not being able to stand in the streets. I mean, you know, around here, see, we, we sort of go the opposite direction. And we have, um, in large churches, they get the police to actually come and direct traffic um, when services let out. Right. But, you know, this is not people standing to pray. These are Muslims praying. Muslims get on their knees and bow their heads to the ground. <laughs> Turn themselves into speed bumps. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, well, that's yeah, right. And that's the problem. You've got a bunch of human speed bumps out sitting out there. A thousand of them, one guy said. You know, so, yeah, I mean, this. I think this makes exactly, this makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. You can't have people, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, I don't care what it is, blocking the road. Right. Right. Now, the thing is, at the same time, now, because I totally agree with that, I do, this whole concept of secular spaces it really bothers me. Well, that's, in, that's assuming... That it's a, a correct translation. Right, right. And that's the thing that I don't... You know, really know, it may be, you know, public spaces. It may be... I mean, you know, the idea of... If it was a park, if it was a sidewalk, if it was, a, you know, in front of City Hall, and no, you can't do this. This is a secular space. That makes sense. That, I mean, then I'd be con- concerned with you. I'd agree. But not in the middle of the road. Right, right. But it it kind of, just some of the, I don't know if it's this the tone of the article um, or, or, or what it is. I, I know, I mean, here's the other thing you have to keep in mind. In France, right, um, you know, it's, it says that, that France has, uh, there are 2,000 mosques in France, half being built in the past 10 years. They've had a huge influx of Muslims. Right. Not only have they had a huge influx of Muslims, but like the rest of uh, uh, Europe, the birth rate in France is extremely low among the whites, among the native French. So give it a little bit of time, and the Muslims could be out outnumbering the native French very quickly. Right. And so they're trying to figure out what to do about this. And, um, you know, in a sense... What I see that they're doing is they're trying to make things uncomfortable for the Muslims so they leave. Yeah, let them park out on the street and get hit. That'll make them much more comfortable, I'm sure. <laughs> well, that would take care of the Muslim population problem. That's right. Like I mean, you know. Death race 2000, you know. Let's, let's, let's. I mean, this they is a safety issue. Point it values. strikes me more than anything. Not only a safety issue for the people out there, but this also. A safety issue and convenience issue for the people driving. Because, you know, I want to go down the road and there's all these people blocking my path. So now what are you going to do? i got to find a detour. Now there's people over there, over there blocking the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't travel on Friday afternoons. Apparently, you know, I mean. Right. So, I mean, they said some uh, uh, people in one mosque have been, uh, they've opened up a uh, uh, fire station nearby to let them pray there. And uh, a few other places, you know, they're <coughs> trying to have some dialogue with, with local Muslims, and that's born fruit. Yeah. So they don't want to use, they will use force if they have to, but they don't want to. Right. So here's the thing if anybody who's uh, watching or listening to this, I'd really like your feedback. If you know something about this, um, I know that, that in France, not only is there, you know, sort of issues of, of space and stuff like that. But um, the whole concept of, of sharing your faith, um, I've, I've had dialogues with, um, with French people, uh, Christians, who were very much against a public sharing of faith. And um, because it was seen, it was in France seen as a very private thing. Uh, I'm not sure what they do with things like the Great Commission. Um, but uh, it's... And, and, and frankly, I see it as that whole concept of faith being private um, as, as very contradictory uh, to the Bible. But um, but at, at the same time, they're trying to um, they're trying to figure out how to live um, in in their community without having a lot of violence. And, and there's a quote in here. Um, 
I uh, can't find it out, but it, it basically said in France, multiculturalism has failed. Um, it's just, th- they're having huge problems there. And I don't know, you know, what the solution is at, on the one hand, I said, you know, I, I can sit here very arrogantly in America where we do a pretty decent job, um, you know, of, of handling issues of, of different faiths and things like that. And, and, you know, we, we've got our problems here. Um, but we're not having huge issues of, of banning, um, you know, France banned, uh, people from, um, oh, where is it? Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. Uh, in April, a ban of wearing the full Islamic veil came into force. By the way, why are we wearing bras on our heads? Um, Ceremonial. Holland today became the third European country to ban the burqa after Belgium. Um, and, you know, so they're, they're having, because they've got these uh, people practicing this way, it's, it's one, you know, in America, uh, you know, you can wear this stuff, but there's rules about where you can wear it. Uh, if you go into certain like government buildings and things like that, I know there's rules about that you can't, um, or or banks, uh, things like that. There's rules about head coverings and things like that, but um, but not in general. Uh, just you know, walking down the street kind of thing. So. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, we've been talking here about Muslims, and I said that, you know, given the birth rate, they're probably taking it over. Uh, you know, we said all these things about, uh, um, about the, but you know, let's be real honest. If we were working for the FBI, they wouldn't be happy. <laughs> all right. So there was, the FBI, um, had a lecture, uh, that was, it was, this was first recorded at, by Wired.com. Um, and, uh, and unidentified, uh, officially unidentified, they had a pretty good idea who it was, um, lecturer for the FBI, uh, or during a training session, uh, made a, a number of statements about Muslims and, uh, they sort of, among other things, and this sort of sums it up, the more devout a Muslim is, the more likely he is to be violent. And not just talking about Middle Eastern Muslims, talking about American Muslims too. Um, the sort of mainstream ones, not the extremists. And, um, so this kind of hit the news and, and, uh, and it was all over the place. And then, um, the FBI said, um, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, and it sort of sounds like what happened was that there was one guy that was teaching this stuff and, and nobody knew that he was teaching it because they don't monitor the content of every single class that's taught in their training sessions. And uh, and then when they found out what he was saying, they put a stop to it real quick. Stop! Hard and see. That's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, the problem is, I think, you know, as I read this stuff, is that they're making, I, I, first off, the more devout he is, the more violent. Okay, I don't think you can say that. Um, the one of them that they did say was, um, yeah, that said that, that a lot of the... Uh, um, Mercy giving, uh, charity, uh, it was a funding mechanism for, for combat. Um, not necessarily all, but there has been some evidence that some money basically has been laundered and gone to terrorists overseas. Um, you know, so there, you know, it is some, um, you know, uh, what was the other one? The Prophet Muhammad was a cult leader. Well, Depending how you define that term, and considering the fact that he was, you know, married to, you know, girls as young as twelve, um, yeah, that probably would, you know, we would probably argue that, uh, you know, especially when you're, you know, you're a self-proclaimed prophet, you can do no wrong, um, and uh, you know, that's that's, yeah, I think we would say that today, um, yeah, you know, just like we say, uh, you know, Joseph Smith was a cult leader, a cult leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, mainstream American Muslims are likely to be terrorist sympathizers. Eh, you can't say that. You know, the interesting thing is I find a lot of reading this stuff is that we forget how assiduously uh, the Muslims were uh, courted 
um, before the 2000, in the 2000 election. I was thinking, remember today, reading an article that, um, uh, uh, that W, uh, you know, campaigned in mosques and stuff. He thought that could be a, you know, kind of the, the Republican version of the Jewish vote. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but, <laughs> well, after they built up a couple of buildings, that kind of you know, faded, but, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, so I just kind of, you know, I'd like to know who this guy was and uh, uh, who said these kinds of things. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I I don't think that you can sort of paint the whole FBI uh, based on the comments of one person any more than you can paint the entire Muslim faith based on the actions of a, um, well, a, a significantly larger uh, portion if you want to look worldwide as far as number of extremists go. Um but but certainly not uh, representative uh, throughout, um, and certainly not representative in the United States. Uh, yes, there are Muslim extremists in the United States. There are also Christian extremists in the United States. Um, I saw a great quote with all the, the stuff last week about 9-11 and that. Um, there was a... Uh, oh, I have to remember. Um, they said, it was, it was a Muslim guy, and, and he said, uh, I will not apologize uh, for the actions taken by a very um, a very small uh, percentage of of the Muslim community. Um, and then he said, I'm trying to remember the band. He he referenced a band that has a new album that came out, and he said. Um, if, if I have to apologize for for the actions of a handful of Muslims, then all whites have to apologize for the release of this album or something like that. It was pretty funny. I guess he had to be there though. So, um. well, no, but at the same time, I think Christians. I I don't think anybody's saying you have to apologize, but can you show dismay? Can you show shock? Can you say, "Hey, this is absolutely wrong." Yeah, you know. and, and a lot of Muslims do. A lot of them are are sort of embarrassed and just want it to go away. Um, and um, and and you know, some are probably afraid to speak out too loudly. Um, because these uh, these the extremists are not afraid to silence uh, those who speak against them, even if they happen to be other Muslims. And uh, so there may be a certain degree of fear. That that keeps them from from speaking up. But the, I mean, if you look, if you kind of look around, um, there's been plenty of Muslims speaking out against, um, you know, the 9/11 attacks and, and things like that. Um, so it's it's not like it's not like that. Everybody is all the Muslims are sitting at home going, "Yay, shh, yay," you know. <laughs> It's it's just not the case. Uh, they they just. Uh, I was talking to um, uh, a guy that was doing uh, Muslim evangelism work in um, in Cedar Rapids, uh, which is the home. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, is the home of the first American mosque. Uh, there's a lot of Muslims there, and um, and and he said that I asked him uh, how the. Um, how the Muslims respond to uh, all the sort of terrorism and things like that. And, and he said they're really embarrassed by it and they don't like to talk about it. And, um, you know, they just, they don't want to be associated with it and, and they just sort of want to change the subject. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, we've got to talk about those Muslims and they're praying out in the road and stuff. I think all of them need an orange triangle. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking we need to make that uh, that bridge with the, uh, no pun intended, um, with the the whole being out in the road thing. Um, so you know that would that might have made them all safer. So I just I'm sorry, you know, it, from CNN, a group of Amish men uh, in Kentucky, they refuse. They say it would violate their religious belief to have the bright orange safety triangle put on the back of the buggy. I mean, if you, you know, now if you live in Pennsylvania or Ohio, now I've never been down to Kentucky, but Pennsylvania, I've gone through several times. So there's a huge Amish population, and on all the roads, you see horses and buggies, 
with these big honking orange triangles, which basically says this is a slow moving vehicle. So that at night you can tell, oh, there's this horse and buggy ahead of me. I need to, you know, slow down. I'm going to have to get around this guy so I don't take him out. Mm-hmm. Um, however, there is this old order Schwarzenegger Amish, and nine men in western Kentucky have refused to use them because they they have uh, um, and it's a loud color and worldly symbols, and they say it says that the user no longer trusts fully in God. Now, what I really don't get is the fact that they use reflective tape. That's okay. Yeah, it's like, I know. So, uh, you, so you aren't trusting fully in God anyway. <laughs> I mean, you know, but no, the orange triangle is gone. And then it says, um, um, what's the other thing? It says, uh, oh, um, the triangle is a, uh, uh, oh, they, they, they talk to this guy who, um, is, I guess a friend of theirs or something. His, can't remember exact. Can't, can't remember exactly what his relationship w- with with them was. Uh, He's a friend of theirs. Uh, yeah, a friend John of theirs. Via. With, John Via. John Via. Yeah. Anyhow, he says, and this is what I thought was really stupid. The triangle is a symbol of the Holy Trinity. Swartz and True were Amish, belong belong in believe in the unity of God, which motivates their refusal to use the symbol. No, it's a triangle. Little kids, that's all we need is to say the triangle is a symbol of the Trinity. Then we're not going to start teaching triangles in school anymore. And then goes there goes our, our geometry classes, Boy. which some kids probably wouldn't complain about. Yeah, but Telly Monster would. You know, but On I Sesame just, Street. Oh, Telly, okay. you know, he's a big fan of triangles. Oh, OK. I can't remember that, but I just Royal Order think, of Triangle fans or something like that. See, I think I think your children should go in tomorrow and refuse to do their geometry work because they have triangles and those are symbols of the Trinity. And that, that would be blessings to use that symbol for math. <laughs> right. Now, I interestingly, in the comments section, oh, another, well, here, I'll, I'll read it because it sort of covers this stuff. This is a post by John Via in the comments section of this article. Update on our Amish men that were jailed for not using the reflective triangle. When they were booked into jail, they were forced to have photos made for mugshots, totally against their religious belief, were forced to wear dark gray jail clothes, while other prisoners were allowed to wear their street clothes. This one I'm kind of curious about, because um, it it said in the article that instead of wearing the orange jumpsuits, they they had dark gray ones for them instead, so they wouldn't have to wear loud colors. Um, but then there's this sort of, it's kind of inconsistent because it's saying that some were allowed to wear their street clothes. Um, and, and so I don't understand who was allowed and who wasn't allowed. Uh, normally when you're, uh, it, I don't know, does it have to do with how long you're in? Um, I know that if you're there for any period of time, um, in jails around here, at least you have to wear the clothes that they provide. Um. Uh, they were kept in the drunk tank the entire time they were jailed and were forced to eat their food with their fingers while all the other prisoners were allowed to have eating utensils. Uh, what's next? They're out of jail at the time of this writing, but back in court we go again on October 10th for the same charges. What can the court and jail think of next to punish these people? Yeah. Well, I would like to have a, 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 a somebody besides himself saying this. I'd like to have a, a, a third-party news story to 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 verify his his right. story there. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, this is a simple safety issue. Mm-hmm. It has nothing, you know. I'm sorry, you know, and certain things have to be done. And they said, you know, this. You know, they in violation of their mug, their beliefs, they had to have pictures taken of them from mug shots. Well, you know what? That's what happens when you break a law and you get right. arrested. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You I break mean, the law, you uh, you just surrendered some of your rights. You know, I mean, this is a this is a simple. I mean, they okay. Put the triangle on. Go to jail. 
your choice. Yeah. And if you'd rather go to jail, then put the triangle on. Okay, fine. Then we're right. going to put you, then we're going to take your mugshot. Because here's the problem. You're driving at night, right? I don't care how much reflective tape you have. The orange triangle, that's a, a recognized throughout the country as slow moving vehicle. You know you have to slow down because you're not going to see the rest of the buggy. Right. Right. You just see that triangle, you know, oh, I got to slow down or somebody's going to get hurt. Right. And versus the, um, you know, the reflective tape, like what, what is that? Well, I'll, right. when I get closer, I'll be able to see what it is, you know. Right. Um, now, I mean, that's, yeah. No, the... Someone raised the question of, well, what about, you know, these things are moving about the same speed as a bicycle or, or a jogger or something like that. Okay, the difference is bicycles and joggers, uh, for one, bicyclists need to have lights on their bikes if they're riding them at night. Uh, for two, both of them are on the side of the road. And joggers generally have reflective vests on, but, you know, a horse and buggy, it takes up, you know, a good part of the lane. Right, right. You know, yeah, and, and, and a jogger, if, if, if a jogger is jogging at night and, and they're wearing reflective stuff, you can tell just by the movement that's a jogger. Right. You can and tell the, by a bicyclist. Right. Um, and you know. a jogger, if there's a sidewalk, the jogger can be on the sidewalk. A horse mm -hmm. and buggy can't. Right. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's not this a... This is the lule. This is, I mean, this... This isn't just Kentucky. I see it in Pennsylvania. I see it a lot, a lot of places. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, and if they, if these guys are saying, no, 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 we can't do that, then you know what? You can't have your, your vehicles on the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Walk. If you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to, um, use those things, that's fine. Keep your vehicles off the road. Right. I mean, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, I hate, to, I mean, I feel like I'm t t talking about children here. Um, but the world doesn't revolve around you. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to do things for safety of other people. I mean, um, it was like uh, in the, um, which state was it, where they had the, 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 the Muslim women not wanting to take their veil off for their license photos. Well, you know what? We have to be able to see your face in the license photo. That's just life. You know, it's not about you. It's about other people's safety. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you know, and if you, you, you're you just gonna, you know, when you can't have everything your way in the world, we all have to compromise sometimes. Right, right. And this is something that, you know, I, I think I talked about this a little bit last week, um, with Christians wanting things a certain way. Um, oh, when we were talking about uh, having pastors at the 9 11 thing, um, you know, we and and the Amish being Christian, right. There's a point where you just need to say, well, you know what? I, I really believe that I should be able to do this or that, right or wrong. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to expect the world to bow down before me and, and do whatever I wish just because I claim religious freedom. Right. You know, I mean, I'm sure if they, they can try appealing this in court, and I'm, try, I'm sure the court's just going to say, in this case, public safety trumps religious freedom. Right. Because your freedom ends, you know, it's, it's, it's the, your, the freedom to swing your fist stops at my nose. That's right. You know, you know and it's but, that sort of thing. You're talking about, it's a safety issue. Right. I mean, you know, um, and I mean, we're not talking, they don't drive down interstates. They drive back, you know, they drive on back country roads. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times those are very poorly lit, uh, curvy. Oh, People drive too fast. Take them out, take the car out. Yep. Yeah, hilly, curvy. I know. Even in the daytime, man, you can be coming around a curve and there's a buggy right there. It was just, I mean, because, yeah, here in Ohio, um, Jim's already mentioned, it was um, a few weeks ago that I was driving and came upon a buggy. And, I mean, I, I saw him well enough in advance and um, and I was watching for him because they actually had signs up uh, letting people know. Um, although... You know, it's sort of like a deer crossing sign just because, um, uh, you know, they don't always stay um, where they're supposed to stay as far as where the signs are, you know. <laughs> yep, so, that's for sure. Uh, maybe, maybe they need a choose Amish license plate. Okay. This is, 
this is kind of a weird story uh, for me. It was it was a little surreal. Um, in North Carolina, um, approved a Choose Life specialty license, and um, and it, it's it says Choose Life at the top of, of the plate, and then there's a little picture of uh, a brown skinned boy and uh, um, well, I'm, I'm assuming it's supposed to be white girl. Um, Although it's yellow, just because the background is yellow and the picture is transparent, um, but kind of the idea that it's it, it, it's it's a picture of of adoption, um, where you have people from different backgrounds, different um, you know ethnic backgrounds that are part of the same family, and and I had to pick this story because we have not that plate because we're not in North Carolina, we're in Ohio, but we have a plate. A license plate on one of our vehicles that says "Choose Life," and and then ours, which this one doesn't. Ours says "Adoption Builds a Family." Um, and it was set uh, for vehicle owners to express their opposition to abortion. The now the ACLU is suing the state of North Carolina because they have. Express, expressly and repeatedly, that's exactly what the, that's a, the quote, expressly and repeatedly, end quote, uh, that's from their lawsuit, rejected a pro-choice plate, which says um, so it's something like respect choice or trust women respect choice. Um, and they're saying, look, if you're going to make a choose life uh, bumper sticker, a I, I, I choose life license plate, that you should also make a respect choice license plate. Um, I guess you could always, you know, have a little heart there with a little round thing and a uh, line going through it saying choose death, but that's another story. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I was thinking about it, and I thought the irony here is that it has the word choose right in it. So, <coughs> so, so it, you know, really... Um, I always thought that th- this was sort of a good. It was a, it was a way to for for people that um you know that really even if you are pro choice that you could and I'm I'm sure you wouldn't um because it's certainly the pro life position is implied in this because it's a slogan used by the pro choice movement but um but this is actually a sort of middle of the ground thing mi- uh, middle of the road thing that where you're saying choose. Life, you know, no, because you do have you, a you can't say it's a <laughs> no, uh, no. This is not. Uh, this is this is definitely a pro life. Okay, I I, no, uh, I know I know, but I mean, at you least can't it, see it anyway against it. Um, you know, I I, I, I would argue, and I and I really do. I I I think they actually have a point. You know, in a secular state. And that's what the, the federal government is. We've often argued we should be able to have all all positions heard. You know, in Massachusetts, you know, I've complained about the adoption situation. That you know, if you if a, a, if you don't want to do gay adoption, you you know you should be able to say we are a religious institute, a religious organization. We do not do gay adoptions. You can go across the street; they'll take care of you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. You know, that you should, your, your position should be equally respected. Okay. What's good for the saw, goose is good for the gander. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing here. If you have, yeah, it, it, put, I don't think anybody's going to buy them. You know, I don't know many pro choice, there might be a few, but I don't think the state has any right. If we're going to put out a pro life, choose life, life and plate, then yes, we should have a respect choice. It should, and and I think that if you say it that way, it's it's not something like respect choice. Uh, I like that better than trust women respect choice. Um, you know, respect choice is is it's pretty non confrontational. You know, right. and and it's true. I mean, um, you know, desperate attempts to justify this aside. Um, <laughs> I mean, what it comes down to is it's a political position, and if you're gonna have, um. You know, and and I I believe that it's more. I personally believe that it's more 
than just a political position that it's a moral position and um and and I have some you know it's very serious uh concerns about uh, the other side um but at the same time given the nature of the debate in our culture and the the current status of the debate um you really you've got to allow both if you're going to allow one you got to allow both so it's and since it's and you can say well okay where do you draw the line because obviously you can't make a different license plate for every single thing that people think is important okay but in this this is this particular issue they've chosen to have a plate representing this particular um position okay then you can have the opposite position um now now the only thing that that I could see that they'd have to check on and and I don't know if the, if they would do this the other way around um or if this is done when they choose these plates, do they um, do any kind of surveying to find out how many people would actually be interested in such a plate to see whether it's actually um, worthwhile to do it? Right. Well, that would come out in discovery if they, you know, said, "Look, we 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 investigated it. We did, you know, X Y Z number. You know, we surveyed it, and." You know, the amount it would cost us to get production up and get the plates produced versus the number sold wouldn't work, wouldn't be enough money. Mm -hmm. Right. But, I mean... That's, that's legitimate. That's that's a legitimate secular reason. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, but, you know, I, to my knowledge, it doesn't say whether or not that's been um, investigated or not. Right. Yeah. And it, it doesn't sound like it um, from this article. Um so, so yeah, I mean, you know, with with anything like this, you've got to allow both sides. And, and frankly, I think it's important to allow both sides um, just because it encourages dialogue. And you can't, you, you can't cram your position down somebody else's throat and say, up, oh, up, oh, nope, not, no, I'm not going to let you talk. You know, uh, no, I've, I've, I've spoken. That's it. You know, all right. The only way um, that you're going to, you know, change hearts is through dialogue. And um, so it, it, these sort of things just encourage communication and, and, um, and discussion. And, um, you know, it's, it's only a good thing. So. Right. So I don't know. There's no segue to this last one. Except maybe just speaking of choose death choices, you know. I oh, okay. got to choose a girlfriend. Um, you were the chosen one. Okay, so this is um, um, last Tuesday on the Seven Hundred Club. Uh, Pat Robertson was doing viewer mail, and um, he had a, a viewer ask a question about a friend, and his this, this guy's wife suffers from Alzheimer's. And, you know, he, I'm assuming the woman is, is institutionalized for Alzheimer's. And he's very frustrated. And he took up with another woman for companionship. And Pat said, this is a terribly hard thing. I hate Alzheimer's. It's one of those awful things because here's a loved one. This is a woman or man you've loved for 20, 30, 40 years. So that person is gone. They're gone. They are gone. So what he says, basically, he's correct. I know it sounds cruel, but he's going to do something. He should divorce her and start all over again. But, you know, but you know, to make sure she has custodial care and somebody looking after her. And his co-host says, well, wait a minute. What, isn't that vow we take when we marry someone? For richer, for better, better, for worse, richer, or poor? And Pat Robertson said, well, yeah, I know if you respect that vow. But they say, till death do us part. This is, this is kind of death. So that's what he's saying. It, this is an ethical question. It's beyond my ken to tell you. I certainly would have put a guilt trip on you if you decided you had to have companionship. You're lonely. I can't fault them for wanting some kind of companionship. But if he says that his sense that she's gone, he's right. It's like a walking death. But he adds with life, get some ethicists besides me to give you the answer. I recognize the dilemma. The last thing I do is condemn you for that take, taking that kind of action. 
And I said, well, maybe not the last thing. But as Vox Nova's Mark Corton points out, Robertson was on the vanguard of those condemning Michael Schiavo, or whatever, for abandoning his wife, Terry, and seeking to remove the feeding tube because she was brain dead, more so than many Alzheimer's patients. What is this guy? Crazy? (sighs) Uh, Pat Robertson? All right, you know how how Muslims, when you talk about... um, uh, the you know suicide bombers and what an extremists that they they try to change the subject, all right. That's for Christians. It's Pat Robertson. <laughs> like no, no, really, just yeah, yeah. The, did you see the Indians game today? You know. <laughs> uh, okay, here's the deal. Alzheimer's is horrible. It's absolutely, absolutely horrible. I've I've dealt with so many, um, uh, you know, spouses uh, trying to trying to deal with this, and yeah, you know, and if you think about it, what he says about companionship, all right, he's he's got some, he's onto something with this whole companionship thing, okay, and that is that that your spouse is your greatest companion, um, you know, they they are to you. Uh, the closest thing that you have to a physical uh, version of your relationship with Jesus. All right. And so to, to see something as devastating as Alzheimer's happen to your spouse, all of a sudden the person that you really need to be there to sort of somebody to talk to about this and, and, and everything, well, that's actually the person that, is having the problem and you can't talk to them about it. Um, not in such a way that, that you can have that sort of communication. Um, but the better or worse thing, it's exactly right. Um, it's, it's just, you, you can't say it. Well, it's kind of a death. All right. I mean, in a sense it is, Right, but as long as that person is alive, you're married to them, right? And and this falls under the um, where God repeatedly says to care for the orphans and the widows, right? What He's talking about there is people that cannot take care of themselves, right? And and so here, you know, who is a, a better example in our world of someone who can't take care of themselves than an Alzheimer's patient? And um. And okay, there's probably better examples, but you get the point. Okay, you know, I, and I, I and I understand that. Of course, I'm not sure what it means. This guy took up with some other woman for quote companionship, uh, unquote. Okay, I mean, did, are they? Does it mean they're dating? Does it mean they're friends? You know, what I mean, I, I'd like to know a little bit more exactly what this relationship entails. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, because, I mean, we're not talking, we're t- I mean, we're talking about something that can go for years, and that, you know, people can just be ugly. I mean, you know, I, there's, I don't know, I forget back, in, I knew this one lady, I mean, she was sweet, little, demure lady, never heard a fly, never have a crossword. And I mean, she could, man, she, she, she'd take the paint off a wall with her cousin when she was, uh, had Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. I mean, and she yelled and spit and kicked at her husband. I mean, I remember him just sitting there just crying and just saying, Pastor, I can't stand to go see her anymore. Yeah, I can't even handle this. Um, you know, and just try. And I just said, don't remember your wife the way she was. Mm-hmm. Because this that's not her anymore. Yeah, you, know, you and I know what she was like, and it's not it's not that person that you see there. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he was he was he was older, and um, and he he lived alone, so he wasn't looking for companionship. But you know, if you had somebody who, you know, he's still relatively healthy, and his wife is there. I mean, now again, what's companionship look like? 
does it mean, you know, they're spending the night together? Or does it mean this is the person that goes out, I can go out to dinner with and talk to? Rather than sitting at home, opening a TV dinner. Right. Yeah. And 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 that's yeah, and and that's the whole thing. Now, normally, uh, it's it's still kind of a fine line though um, when it's somebody of the opposite sex because I always uh, encourage people to um, that it's you really should not have a friend of the opposite sex that is not a um, where it's like a couple or it's, it's a, you know, well, this is my spouse's friend and we get along too or whatever. But, you know, because just because of the propensity for it to develop into something more, I mean, there's so many marriages that are broken up that way. Um, and so that needs to be, um, taken into account. Right. Um, I mean, but I know, I, well, I remember I never, I didn't know the situation personally, one of our seminary professors, you know, one of our seminary professors said, told us a situation that uh, I think he had to deal with. I think it was in his, yeah, I think he, he said he dealt with it. And uh, there was a um, a situation where it was a, a car accident. This woman was thrown into a coma. Um, doctors just said, just a matter of time. Um, husband was there every day. Seven years later, she still hasn't died, um, and she's just kind of like kind of like the situation with Terry Shavuot. Well, there's no way. There's no you know Terry Shavuot. There's no Shavuot. There was no way. I mean, they just fed her. That's the only thing they did. And but after seven years, the doctor said, "Look, you can't keep going up there anymore. You're, you know, it's killing her. You know, this isn't good for you." So he broke off and started seeing her like going up there like twice a week. Or three times a week to see his wife. Um, he was sitting out in the waiting room and just started talking to some people. And there's a woman whose husband was dying, or had died, or something like that. I can't remember exactly the details, but yeah, he he was like, "I am so lonely," you know. And he was kind of like, "Pastor, can I date? She's not going to come back." The doctor said she's not going to live. If she was opened her eyes, I, I'd jump tomorrow. Though so God only knows how much work she'd have to do, probably in therapy. Now I think about it, but uh, you know, um, you know. But what am I? You know, do I just have to sit here alone night by myself, waiting for her to die? Right, and it, you I know, mean, and in a situation like that, and, and Alzheimer's is another thing that's that's not reversible. All right. So I mean, it, it, you, yeah. So that's a different situation. Well, All right. I understand where he's coming from. I I just you know I I can understand his, how he's trying to, to to puzzle this through. What do you do for this person who's you know or or you know I mean because you know for their their mental health and stuff. Okay, maybe maybe you can say look. Uh, you know, who are some other people you can take up with for companionship? You know, can you develop a, a night out with the guys? Can you do something else so that you're not sitting at home? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, um, you know I, I, on the other hand, I mean, he said, he said you know, uh, uh, to, you know, divorce her and start all over again. That's cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's cold. Yeah. Right. Um, and, the, you know, and that's the difference, right? Especially if you have, if you meet somebody who's in a similar situation, like the, you know, um, yeah. and, and that way you can sit and you can actually talk about your spouses and your, and what's on your mind about them and, and things like that. And, you know, and if it's, if it's understood that, you know, I'm still married, I still love this person and, and I'm still committed to doing anything I can for this person, but at the same time I recognize that there's nothing I can do for this person. Um, and, and I, I'm not able to have a relationship with them. Um, that doesn't mean that you can pick up somewhere else. All right. And that's the difference. Okay. Can you have a friend that you can kind of hash through all this stuff with? And, you know, because God made us for relationships, it's, it's, it's part of our being. All right. 
I, 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 and he made that. I don't know where he was going. I mean, you know, sometimes Pat Robertson is not always the clearest. I, mean, I think he's, he's getting old. He thinks they're, you know, checking in there a little bit himself and <laughs> possibly the, the Alzheimer's area. I'm not sure, but, uh, um, you know, but I, I, I mean, I just, this is, this is, this is, you know, an area where, you know, it's almost no good choice. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, because 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 it's just, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, there 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 are some people, and, and I guess I guess too that the different Alzheimer's people are different because, you know, you, I mean, you've had the ones who've been very pleasant, I'm sure, just like yeah. I have. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, I remember this one woman. I she was 15 years old, living out in the farm, and it was nice there all the time, and. She knew, she knew she was, uh, you know, and she goes, yeah, and mom and dad said I had to come back to the hospital. They're just worried about my weight. You know, and, but, but, you know, but they, she just got back. She, she just came in that morning or the night before, mm. you know, but, 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 you know, before that, you know, she'd been, you know, for the last few days she'd been out of the farm riding the horses. Um, and I mean, wherever it was, it was always sunny. It was always happy. Life was always good. Um, wow, you know what? That's not a bad place to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, right. and she was she was just the most pleasant person to talk to. And you know, okay, you just you just had to go. Oh, really? How how you know how how you know how was life on the farm this weekend? <gasps> oh, it was so nice. I mean, you know, um, and you just you just let it go. But she was just you know she was just real pleasant. But like I said, this other one, oh man, oh. You know, she she was one of them that just turned really nasty. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first woman wasn't married, but she had other family that would we'd go visit her. But I mean, this other one, I mean, it just, you know, her kids could hardly stand to go see her. She didn't, she didn't remember any of them. Mm-hmm. And right. she was and just that's vicious. really devastating. Right. So, I mean. You know, I, and, and there, 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 I remember going one time and just, 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 and just going, Lord, please take her. Please rescue her from this. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's really, in my mind, really sad we pray for someone to die. At least, you know, but then I remember, you know, Paul's words, you know, to me to die, to live as Christ, to die as gain, you know, and, and yeah, what, what would be, what, what's better to have this person in the, caught in this horrible disease or to have her free to be with Jesus? She had a good life. You know, take her home and just let her, let her be, be in her right mind again and be before your throne. Yeah. Or else cure her miraculously. Right. You know, so. so but that's yeah. everything tonight. Uh, did we have any viewer mail or anything? No. I, you know, things have been kind of crazy around my house, and so I've been a little late um, getting these uh, episodes published and, um, you know, just finding the time to do it. And, and so it was like, uh, I don't know, Thursday or Friday before I got it posted. Um, so I, I'll apologize to our viewers and listeners for getting these out kind of late. Um, I, I used to try to get them out by Tuesday or Wednesday and um, at worst, and I always felt bad about Wednesdays, but, uh, you know, life happens. And um, and so uh, I'll get them out when I can, and I always make sure to get them out, you know, before the following week. <laughs> But, uh, but so, yeah, because of that, I don't, you know, where the, the mail and comments tend to be, uh, a bit late in coming. Um, so, but you know, if you, if you're watching this and it's old, uh, still welcome your comments. Uh, you can send us an email at podcast or crossfeednews.com. Uh, or you can, uh, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or one of the various video sharing sites, feel free to leave a comment there. And then, uh, we always respond, uh, at, uh, during the next show that we record. So of course, if you're watching, um, a episode from last year, uh, don't look at the following month or the, I'm sorry, the following week, uh, episode for a response, um, you know, watch the, the one dated after your, um, after you leave your comment. And, um, 
So, but, but we really welcome those and, and we're happy to, uh, to read your comments as, assuming that they are appropriate, um, on, on the air and, uh, and, and we'll respond to them and, and, uh, we just love getting feedback from our viewers and listeners. Yes. So you all have a beautiful, wonderful week this next week. Uh, God watch over and bless you and uh, keep you as we, <sighs> doesn't fall begin this week? It does. We leave <laughs> summer and enter the season of fall this week. So God be with you as we begin uh, our fall. Right. Good night, everybody. God bless you.